The movie begins in a desolate snowy landscape where a US general and a soldier named Ben arrive by helicopter. Ben is a US Army soldier who will be stationed here for up to a year, and the general escorts him into a bunker that's buried 11,000 feet underground. He gives Ben a tour of the main control room and provides a brief overview of his duties. As world leaders learn about aliens heading toward Earth, four individuals are positioned in underground bunkers around the globe, each equipped with a dead man switch. Ben is now the occupant of one of these bunkers. Periodically, a doomsday weapon is activated, and one of the four individuals must deactivate it. If the aliens turn out to be hostile, the bunker houses a doomsday device capable of destroying the entire planet. The general shows Ben a button that he must press each time an alarm sounds, and this is a failsafe measure, and if Ben doesn't press the button in time, the doomsday device will automatically activate. The general also warns Ben that if they don't rescue him within a year, he should assume that he Humanity has been defeated by the aliens. At that point, he should stop pressing the button, triggering the doomsday device, and wiping out the aliens. After quickly leaving Ben, the bunker doors are sealed. In the following scene, Ben's first day begins, and as soon as he receives a call from the general, the general provides him with a detailed guide on how to start the scanner and customize the settings and the general discloses the full extent of the detonation. If activated, every nuclear, chemical, and biological weapon worldwide will be triggered, leading to the planet's self-destruction. On the second day, Ben meets the other four team members on the screen, and Han is a Chinese programmer and engineer, Donald, a religious man from South Africa, Gwen, an Australian psychologist, and finally, Katya, who is a member of the Russian Republic Army. As they were getting acquainted, an alarm sounded, and a countdown for the planet's detonation began. Ben quickly rushed to the button and scanned his hands to deactivate it, and he succeeds and others witness it as well. The general then appears on the screen to remind them that this is essentially their job, and that they must always be alert to prevent the countdown from reaching zero. Over the next few days, the team members try to learn more about each other and share their backgrounds, and Han reveals a radio he had smuggled into the bunker. Initially, the radio station was clear, with a report discussing the aliens. However, it soon stops working, leaving the group disappointed and clueless about the events unfolding outside. The scene then shifts to day 48, where Ben was growing particularly close to Katya. On this day, he was flirting with her when the general suddenly appeared on the screen to update them about the aliens. It seems that there had been some communication between the humans and the aliens, and they are now within the solar system. Their intentions remain unclear, but they were definitely present, and Ben and the others are shown satellite images, suggesting that the aliens might be colonists and potentially dangerous. The scene then fast forwards to day 70, where the group was still committed to their mission. They deactivate the alarm as it periodically sounds, and Ben and Katya also spend their days playing advanced chess. They continue their flirtatious banter, and despite being thousands of miles apart, and unable to meet in person. Later that day, Katya intentionally leaves her camera on while she showers, and Ben turns to the camera and sees her showering. He initially feels embarrassed and looks away, but Katya tells him she wants him to see her. Suddenly, the sirens sound and chaos breaks out, and he sees Katya's bunker being destroyed by the aliens, and one of them grabs Katya. Ben wakes up in terror, realizing it was just a nightmare. And as he wakes up terrified, Katya was on the screen in real time, asking him what frightened him. He tells her that it was just a bad dream about her, but she insists he tell her. He begins to tell her about it, but Katya quickly becomes nervous, thinking that they were intimate in her dreams. She becomes shy and reserved, but Ben seizes the opportunity to tell her he wonders what it would be like to kiss her in person, to date her, and to travel with her as well. Katya didn't want to give him false hope, reminding him of their dire mission. And disappointed, Ben acknowledges her point and realizes that their circumstances might have influenced his feelings for her. The scene moves forward to day 133, and now the group is almost starting to get exhausted from pushing the disarming button. This time, the alarm goes off and Han was playing his game, and he didn't want to stop, so he just ignored the siren. But Ben shouted at him, telling him that this was a serious matter and to go and push the button. This was Han's turn, but when he pushed it, he claimed it didn't respond. He knows he pressed it, but it didn't cut off, implying that the switch stopped working. 
Han is an electrical engineer, so he decides to take a peek into the wires, but Ben opposes messing with the wires, but Han instinctively just takes out a wire, and this causes his screen to turn off, and part of the signal is lost. The others try to retrieve it, and Ben attempts to reach the signal, but it was just unsuccessful. The next day, Han was able to fix the wires, and he also appeared on the signal, and his engineering skills helped him get the signal back and later on, they receive a voice image and message from the general that shows how the aliens were getting closer. That night, Katya and Ben continued to play a chess game, but Ben revealed that he had been a loner all his life and that he never really loved anyone. But he admits it took this job for him to really be into somebody, and now he wants Katya to be all in or out with him and urges her to stop playing chess with him if she doesn't feel anything for him. Katya gets reserved as before and denies his request. However, at night, she surprises Ben with a virtual date, implying she's agreed to be with him. She was dressed nicely and looked really beautiful, and Ben also changes his pajamas and wears something nice for the date. They decide to watch a movie together, and as they enjoy their date through the screen, the night gets a little freaky, and Katya confesses that she's a bit drunk. Ben thought she was drinking grape juice, but she says she smuggled some alcohol before coming into the bunker. The two have then taken their date to the next step, and Katya uses her imagination to feel Ben in the room. She urges him to explain to her how he would kiss and embrace her if they were in the same room, and she gets very passionately erotic as he watches her do her thing. Tensions escalate between them and they both get into the mood, but their night is shortly interrupted when the alarm goes off and Ben rushes to disarm it. And Katya laughs awkwardly at the awkwardness of the moment. We then forward the scene to day 223, and it's now almost a year, and the group is asking the general how much longer they would have to be there, and he tells them the aliens arrived the previous night. They all then get shocked, but he assures them that a meeting will be held between the aliens and the humans, and that they should get their hopes up. The next day they don't hear anything and it goes like that for a week, and on day 229, Katya is worried as there are no updates from the general. Donald and Han are sure that the aliens have colonized humans, and Gwen tries to calm everyone down, and Ben just stands there clueless. Han manages to get the signal back on the radio, but the wires he plugged into the power source quickly get electrocuted and sadly, he gets killed in the process and we just see everybody standing there in shock. Day 232 arrives, and still the group hadn't recovered from Han's terror. Gwen, as always, keeps the group's spirits up, however this time, Donald doesn't seem okay. He is sweating and shivering, and Ben notices this, and he asks him what's going on, and Donald admits that it's been cold and thinks his ventilation system is malfunctioning, but he insists on taking the shift and suggests Ben take a rest, and the others also sign off to take a break. The next day, the group sees Donald on the screen, frozen to death. They all shiver in fear and call out to Donald to wake up, and Katya tells them that their fate is no different, but Ben still holds the idea that the general will call them soon. On day 304, on the next scene, we see Ben playing a video game to pass the time. Gwen comes to tell him that she's hearing some drilling noise coming up from her bedroom, and he asks her to go there and show him, and Gwen walks there, and for a minute, the sound made the group think that Gwen was coming home and that the misery was finally over. However, her roof suddenly blew off, and she was grabbed and pulled by an unknown force. Ben witnesses this, but he couldn't do anything to see the thing that took her, and he scans her in the room, but she was nowhere to be found. On day 335, the only survivors are Katya and Ben, and at this point, Katya doesn't even look okay, and she proposes to Ben that maybe the rest of humanity has been wiped by the aliens, and that they should stop disarming the nuclears. However, Ben thinks that this could be a serious risk, and maybe the aliens did not wipe out humans, but she kept insisting he should let go, and without considering her plea, Ben goes to turn off the alarm, and she quickly gains her senses back and realizes that they can't really take the risk. In the next scene, a year has passed, and it's now day 367, and Ben tells Katya that his bunker's power was out last night, and she asks how long they will be alive, and she claims that she wants to spend the rest of her time with Ben, and Ben says he would really like it. But shortly, her power source starts making noise, and when she goes to check it, a fire has cut the wires on the computers. Ben witnesses it and screams that he will not be able to save his beloved Katya, 
and the signal shortly cuts off, and now Ben finds himself on day 369 alone, without any remaining team members. He seemed kind of depressed and neglects the bunker, and as always, the expected siren comes off, and this time, Ben really reconsiders not disarming it. He was all alone and not even sure if humanity existed on the outside, so the only viable choice was to leave the sirens and not to disarm them so that the activation will be completed, as a few seconds were left for the initiation that General appears on the screen, announcing to Ben that humanity has made it and Ben had managed to abort the alarm. The general thanked him for his patience and told him that he had used a new weapon to match the intelligence of the aliens, and he then reassures Ben that he will be dug out soon, but that it may take time to rewind the complex disarming systems. Ben is now relieved of all the confusion and silence, however he had to keep pressing the button until they come to rescue him. The scene shifts back to the general, where he gets annihilated by a bunch of aliens, and we catch a glimpse of Doomsday through the window of the general's office, and the movie comes to an end by focusing on making the point of how much our destiny is controlled by the choices we make.